In the ghetto, there are crackheads. In case you didn't know, crackheads are people addicted to crack cocaine. Crackheads in the ghetto go together like Kool-Aid and fried chicken. Now, crackheads got to get their crack from somewhere, and that's where crack dealers come in. I grew up in the projects. This meant I spent a lot of time around crack dealers and crack addicts. However, my experience had a unique feature. I spent the first five years of my life living next to a certified grade A crackhead. When I moved to another housing project, I lived next to a crack dealer for four more years. Now, the hood is a terrible place to begin with. I can assure you that living next to hard drug users and drug dealers is a unique level of hell that most will never experience. These are my lessons, observations, and experiences from living next to crack dealers and crackheads. One, a crackhead is surprisingly functional. Now, a lot of crackheads rob and steal to get drug money, but there are also quite a bit who have jobs. They use that money to fund their crack habit and to keep a roof over their head. Remember, not all crackheads want to get high in a crack house. My mom even occasionally let a crackhead babysit us. She lived next door to me as a kid, and that brings me to my next experience. Crackheads value drugs over money. The crackhead next door babysat me. When I was four years old, I picked up a syringe full of heroin and squirted it. I thought it was a water gun. The crackhead was super angry, and it wasn't even crack. I remember my mom offering to pay for the lost drugs, but the junkie didn't calm down. I actually don't remember the eventual resolution, but I remember that it wasn't solved with cash. In the world of the crackhead, crack is God. Crackheads will sell their children to get crack money. Both men and women, if they're addicted to crack, will perform oral just to get more money when they're low on funds. No crime is too great or too low once a person has sold their soul to crack three. The crackhead economy is legendary. It's common to hear someone in the hood talk about crack prices when referring to something inappropriately priced. The object is in the crack price range when it's priced too low for what it's worth just to expedite sale. My introduction to the concept of crack prices came at age five. One day, my dad parked his car outside and went through the extra effort of putting his club anti-theft device on. I asked why he put the club on. His response was, so some crack kid doesn't steal my car and sell it for $5. That confused me. While five-year-old me didn't know how much cars cost, I knew they were likely a lot more than $5. Once I learned that the rock is the most important thing to a crack kid, it all made sense. Since then, I've watched or been victim to this type of crackhead behavior on more than a few occasions. I've known crackheads to break out car windows for loose change in the seats, ignoring anything else of value. Once, a crackhead broke into my apartment and only stole a jar of change and a cable box. The crackhead is extremely short-sighted. It says it on Wikipedia. It's only thinking about the fastest way to get just enough money to get high again. Four, superhuman feats ascribed to crackheads are inspired by true events. Now, I personally watched the crackhead get hit by a car and walk away, jump out of a three-story building and hit the ground running, eat out of a dumpster, and drink from a sewer. But I've never seen a crackhead at the hospital, and this is something a big farmer doesn't want you to know. Crack doesn't actually give a person superpowers. I joke about the crackhead superpowers, but all good jokes contain a bit of truth. What probably happens is that crack changes the brain, allowing them to endure high amounts of pain in pursuit of a serious addiction. Now, I have seen crackheads get hit by cars and keep moving. I have once seen a crackhead fall a few stories and shake it off like nothing happened. And I've personally witnessed these fiends jump out of burning buildings and land in stride. You don't meet any crack crackheads. Maybe crack raises your metabolism, but it's likely just a symptom of the previous observation. Crack is more important to crackheads than food. Crack comes before food if you only have $5 from the car you stole and sold, even if you haven't eaten in a few days. Now, I've got a collection of quotes, many of which highlight this incredible power of crackheads. Check out the collection of quotes, link in the description. Five, the biggest problem with the illegal drug trade is the violence between suppliers, not the buyers. They make a big deal about drug violence and why we need all these laws against drugs. I don't agree or disagree, I just have a unique perspective. I have no skin in the game either way, but grew up at ground zero of the war on drugs. Here's what I've observed. I've never actually seen two crackheads fighting each other. I've seen them fighting other non-crackheads, but they don't really go to war with each other. However, the crack dealer next door is one of the reasons there were bullet holes in my door. 
On a more general note, most hood violence is drug related. The rest of the violence is because of people taking advantage of someone who comes off as a weak or easy target. It's about controlling who sells what, where, and for how much. Random mugging aren't nearly as common as shooting disputes over street corners. Number six, bad traits come in clusters, especially with crack dealers. I've had a few dealers of all different substances. My general experience has been that the harder the drug, the worse the human being is that has to sell it. I'm sure this is a result of the level of ruthlessness you need to survive in the dope game. Harder drugs are worth more because the competition is tougher. It's merely speculation, but it makes perfect sense to me. The crack dealer who lived next door to me regularly beat his girlfriend. Once he tried to push his way into my house to go after my 10 year old sister to beat her. She played a harmless prank, but he didn't see it that way. I pushed him out of my house, and for the next few weeks I worried that he'd shoot my 13 year old ass. 7. Drug dealers don't really bother citizens. Drug dealing is a thing a person gets into to make money. The ROI is shitty, but most guys sell drugs as a way to make ends meet. They aren't in it to f the world up or hurt other people, despite what drugs do to people. They just want to put food on the table. You generally don't have to worry about drug dealers trying to hurt or rob you for no good reason. Unless you're a player in the game, you're safe. These guys have other issues, but if you keep to yourself, you don't have to worry about crack dealers. Hey, crackhead misery loves company. You'll never meet somebody more generous than a hard drug user offering a hit of his drugs. I never used any hard drugs, but I've been offered heroin, crack, and coke on a few occasions and the dealers weren't the ones making the offer. I was always, or it was always a user, while they were getting high. I don't think something about being a smack or crackhead makes you more altruistic than the general population. I think this is an attempt to normalize their behavior. If you accept their invitation, it makes them feel a lot better about feeding their addiction in your company. And lastly, non. More people are on hard drugs than you think. I didn't learn this directly from living in the projects. I knew a guy who made home deliveries. One day, in the rash stupidity of my youth, I did a ride along with him. I couldn't come into the house and meet the clients, although we were in some pretty nice areas. Most clients bought soft cocaine, but a few wanted hard crack. He told me that most of these people were doctors and lawyers. This reiterates what I've stated earlier about drug dealers being functional individuals. These people can hold down a job, even a damn good one, but they just like to party. Living next to crackheads and crack dealers is something I will never do again. However, I cannot deny that I've learned some things about life that you can't pay to learn in school. If you got something from this video, please subscribe, hit the like button, share it, and let everyone know about crackheads and crack dealers.